So closely related to the concept of displacement is the idea of distance. They, in a sense, measure the length, or they use the same units, kilometers, meters, centimeters, and so on. The difference with distance, though, is that distance is a running total of how far an object has traveled. It's not a vector quantity, it's a scalar quantity. It doesn't care whether you went north, south, east, or west. It just continues to add no matter which direction you go. Forward, backwards, up, down, left, right, makes no difference. It just continues to always add. So in a sense, it is always a positive quantity. Typically, the symbol for this is S, and we'll get into the symbols for distance. It's, it's a little strange that uh, distance and displacement, you might think D would be the letter to represent those, but actually we tend to use different letters for these. Um, but let's look at an example for uh, distance. So if Joe ran 120 meters north, 45 meters west, and 30 meters south, that would be a path that looked something like this. We would go 120 meters to the north, we go 45 meters to the west, and then 30 to the south. Now, distance, unlike displacement, does not care whether we went north, south, east, or west. It would just continually add. It's very much like the odometer on your car. The odometer on your car doesn't care whether you go north on a street or south on a street, east or west, it just keeps constantly adding. It's always a positive number that it keeps to continually adding. So in this case, our total distance would be the 120 plus 45 plus 30 to give us a total distance of 195 meters. So make sure that when you're solving problems that you are somehow indicating where your final answer is and that you're giving units when units are appropriate and that's pretty much always there's very few quantities physical quantities that we'll be working with in this class that do not require you to put units so make sure that you put the units because you'll definitely be docked if you if you do not now on the other hand displacement would be different because displacement would take the straight line distance from the origin that we started from here to here. So you can see that it would be a very different answer. And this is a, a two-dimensional problem, obviously, and we could calculate what would be the distance between here and here, and then what the angle is, the direction that it traveled. Displacement does care where you ended up, whereas distance doesn't really care where you ended up, as long as you were keeping track of all the distances that you traveled. Each time that you changed direction or you moved in a different direction, you kept track of the distance that you traveled in that direction, then you'll be able to calculate your total distance. Now that we have two quantities, we sort of have this issue of keeping track of the, the notation. You know, how do you indicate the difference between when you're talking about distance or when you're talking about displacement? So typically we don't want to write the words out, so we use symbols, letters to represent these quantities. So notation is the symbols that represent properties like distance or displacements or even mathematical um, expressions. And just to start off with, let's actually take a look at some mathematical expressions rather than the physical properties. Um, there are two ways that we think about changes, and this that is actually not a physical property. That's more of a mathematical way of thinking about things. So we use the Greek letter delta when we refer to a change in something, and we will constantly be talking about changes in things because, frankly, if nothing is changing in a physical situation, then why do we care to even think about it? We're really going to focus on this course in s primarily on situations in which things are changing. That's not to say that we'll never look at situations where things are static or things are stationary, but we really would like to be able to describe the, the motion of objects. And, and obviously this is the study of kinematics, and so we're going to be frequently looking at objects changing their position or their velocity, speed, their acceleration, number of properties that can change. So we use the delta sign, and for example, delta x, x is usually the, the variable that's used to um, refer to the displacement. So delta x would refer to the change in displacement. Now we will also occasionally use uh, the Greek letter sigma. Now sigma is similar to delta. It also refers to a change in the physical property, except that the difference is that it's an extremely small change or an infinitesimally small change. This is a really powerful portion of calculus, and in fact, really calculus is sort of based on the idea of making infinite or infinitesimally small uh, changes in physical properties, and then using that as, a, as sort of like a mathematical technique. 
So we might look at a very, very small change in time. That's like a very common thing to do is to look at very small changes in time. You'll see why that's important as we, as we move through the topic. So you just want to keep these two notations uh, straight. Delta, meaning just a, a regular change of any size, and sigma, meaning a very small change in the, in the physical property. Now, any change, whether it's an infinitesimally small change or just a regular change of any size, um, always refers to the final minus the initial. So I, I chose this letter Q to represent quantity, just some quantity generically. I'm not referring to distance or displacement or to any particular property. Just generically some quantity that we have measured and we want to look at the change in that quantity. And in order to do that, you should remember that it's always the final minus the initial. Now sometimes you might say um, QF minus QI, so we would use the initials F and I to represent final and initial. But I think that you'll find that it's more common in the, the more sophisticated science books um, that instead of using I for initial, they use the zero. And the way this is pronounced is Q naught. So you might want to say that to yourself, Q naught. Naught is another way of saying um, zero. The final doesn't get anyone. And the reason why we tend to think of it that way is that we may oftentimes want to make a calculation or to think about a, a problem at various stages. So there may not be like a, a single final position or final displacement or final distance, but it may be constantly changing and we're constantly evaluating it. And so by leaving the subscript off of this one, it, it sort of allows us to um, to at that moment consider the final at that particular time, but then to change it as we move on. Now as we continue to move on, that doesn't change the initial, right? The initial still was the same. Wherever we started, that's where we were when we started. But by leaving the subscript off, it just allows us a little more flexibility in thinking about solving problems. So I will tend to use this notation that the final will be just the variable minus the variable with the not symbol after it. Now, this may seem, as I said, a little strange, but we tend to use the letter S to represent distance, although you may also see some books will use the letter D to represent distance. And we use the letter X to represent the displacement. And I, I know that could be a little confusing because X also represents one of the axes on the coordinate plane. And so it's a, it's a little tricky. Sometimes we may actually graph X on the Y axis. So X in physics refers to the displacement, whereas X in math refers to the axis on the, the coordinate plane. Just as an example, if we wanted to look at the change in displacement, then that would be referred to as delta X. And in order to calculate delta X, we would take the final displacement minus the initial displacement. And just to remind you, there's other notation we might say XF minus XI. That's very common notation. A lot of different textbooks will use that. Or we might even say something like this, X2 minus X1. And it's you know pretty clearly implied that if you say X2, you mean the second location, the second displacement, as opposed to the first displacement. Any one of these notations is perfectly acceptable. You, you would never be graded wrong because you chose one over the other. You don't want to mix them up. You don't want to say, um, for example, x minus x1. If you're going to use the 1 and 2, then make sure you stay consistent with that. If you're going to use initial, then make sure that you say xf minus xi. Um, again, the reason why we tend to not use the subscript on this one is because it gives us just a little more flexibility um, in allowing us to constantly change the problem, to reevaluate the problem at different times or at different locations. And so there may be different final positions or final displacements in that case. Um, just to give you an example of a change in displacement, let's take a look at this problem. Um, so if we start with Ted at 5 meters to the right of the origin, and then have him move 15 meters further to the right, then finally 20 meters to the left, we could think about the total distance that was traveled, the final displacement, and also the change in displacement. So let's start with um, drawing this out. I think it would be very helpful if we draw the origin, and Ted is here at plus 5. And then he traveled 15 further to the right. So we want to go 15, sorry, plus 15. 15 further to the right. 
and then he turned around and headed back. I'm going to draw the next one underneath so that it won't block it. And then he drew, went all the way back to plus 20 to the left. Started at plus 5, traveled plus 15, headed back to the left by 20. Now, in terms of what is the total distance traveled, remember we started at plus 5. This is our, our starting position, so we don't count that in the total distance. We only count from how far we moved from that point. And we moved 15 to the right and 20 to the left, so S would be equal to 15 plus 20 to give us a total of 35 meters. And that's S. Okay. Now, the final displacement, you can see it's, it's pretty obvious. If we were already at 5, we went 15 to the right. That puts us 20 in the positive direction from the origin. So then if we then travel 20 to the left, that means that our final displacement, remember x is the displacement, is 0. Now, what's our change in displacement? Well, the change in displacement we need to look at the final position, and I should say the final position and the initial position. So delta x would be x minus x naught. Now, what was our final position? Our final position was 0. We were at the origin. And our initial position was plus 5. So delta x is negative 5 meters. It's really important that you recognize that the displacement, where you are at a given time, is not necessarily the same as the change in displacement that's occurred. In this case, they gave different answers. In fact, generally speaking, they will almost always be different answers. It would just be by coincidence if they came out to be the same.